All right, back here with Ryan Stasek, basis of Umphreys McGee. We just played Well Wish, Well Wishers, excuse me, the new uh, free single Umphreys McGee has uh, been distributing via the internet. You can uh, go to umphreys.com for more information on the new single Well Well Wishers. Uh, that song debuted in Reno, Nevada, correct, Ryan? That is correct. Now, how did how did you guys uh, decide on let's debut Well Wishers tonight compared to the other shows in the West Coast tour? Um, actually, the reason we tried to do that is because we had recorded a number of tracks that are going to soon be released, and that one we wanted to we were going to be doing a um, uh, I can't remember exactly where it is I'm sorry but in California they were doing a high def um, studio recording. In a, in a video, and we wanted to release that as our next single and have copies of, of a potential video, of a potential, um, you know, something that we could use, some sort of media to push it forward. So that seemed like the, the one that, had, that seemed to be the most uh, prepared to launch. Now, uh, dive into more of that, uh, the, the new digital EP series you guys will be doing uh, throughout this year. New songs have popped up, including Booth Love, The Linear, The Conduit, which is uh, one of my favorite new tracks coming out, uh, Pop-Tart. Uh, just talk about, talk about that and how you're doing these new digital EPs. Um, okay, well, what we decided this time is, is we, have, we have a lot of tracks on the back burner. We have a lot of new songs that don't really fit together as one album or something that we would want to force to put out and say, this is the new Humphreys McGee record. So we've kind of split them up into three different genres, um, one being more progressive, one being more rock and roll, and um, the third to be determined. And uh, we decided to release a trilogy of EPs, um, really uh, you know, being more specific on a, a type of genre or category of music, and, um, and releasing those, and then probably coming out with a triple box set sometime later in the future. Now, I uh, had posted this on, uh, on my uh, Facebook page for fans of the band to submit some questions, so I'll, I'll read a couple to you. Now, this is from Steve, and Steve writes, uh, what's, what's the best shenanigans Umphreys McGee has ever gotten into while on the road? Oh, I don't know if I can talk about this on the radio. He might have <laughs> to uh, send me a message on my Facebook page, Ryan Stasek. <laughs> And I'll have to give him a personal one there. I don't want to break any FCC rules. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm actually in a broadcasting and law class, so we're learning a lot about uh, FCC regulations. Uh, this next question is from Dan, who is an actual bassist himself. He's a uh, part of the band Zmick. This is a couple questions, so I'll read them all, and then you can answer them uh, bit by bit. Number one, favorite odd meter in terms of the musical structure. Uh, number two, favorite metal band. And the third question, what do you think about the DJ slash non-improv electronic music creeping into the jam scene? <laughs> All great questions. All right, let's start with the first one. My favorite odd meter to play in, I'm going to be honest and uh, say probably 7-8, just because bands like Rush and Tool uh, – do it so well where I, I still feel like chicks can dance to it. When you can play an odd meter and people can still groove and act like they're getting around and it doesn't sound like it's an odd meter, I, uh, I really get into that kind of stuff. It's when you start playing in 9, 8, and that's 13, 11, it gets a little, a little weirder, more of those African beats that I'm not very good at keeping time at. Um, favorite metal band? Whew, too many to list. Um, like I said before, I'm obviously a huge Tool fan. Um, I like Lamb of God. I like what they've been doing, what they've been putting out. Their, their, their records sound really amazing. I'm, I'm a Mastodon fan, even though I don't really like singing about whales and mythological stuff too much. And I also um, love Pantera. And then my last question, what do I think about DJs and non-improv music? Um, it's all about what people's tastes are. I enjoy good music. If it's good, I can get way into it. If it's a dance party and there's a lot of females around, and they're digging it. I think I can dig that vibe as well. As far as um, bands that don't improv, I'm a huge fan of that. I like uh, good structure, good songwriting. Um, the DJ thing, I don't really know too much about, so I, I can't really um, talk about the techniques or anything that's really going on. But uh, the only thing that I don't like, and I'm not really a person to ever say anything negative about anything, but the one genre that is not my, uh, particularly my, uh, my boat would be dubstep. Just can't really get into that kind of stuff. Makes you want to sort of have a seizure a little bit. Yeah, same here. I, I can't. Uh, 
I can't really dance. I like. I'm a person that likes to dance. I can't get into the, the uh, wah 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 type kind yeah. of the uh, Charlie Brown teacher speaking to you. It's, yeah. it's if it if it happens minimally and there, but like more than ten minutes of it, I'm I'm out. I would say one of my favorite electronica bands would be the New Deal, just because their oh. sets are so different, night in and night out. And I know you have great ties to the New Deal in the Omega Moos in your cover project. Yeah, th- th- those are those guys are my favorite. They. Plus, they play everything live in real time. There's no samples, no loops. They're just they're uh, amazing, amazing Canadians. Last question from Ben. He wants to know, what's the word on Rothberry? Any hints that it will come back in 2011? And then I'll tie this in. How was your Rothberry experience? I know some of the guys in the band were there as uh, festival goers in 08. And then in 2009, you were one of, I believe, two bands other than the dead to play two nights at Rothbury. Just talk about that whole, uh, Rothbury atmosphere and Ben's question. Uh, Ben's question. I don't know as far as any hints, whether it's going to be happening or not. I, last I heard when I was at Bonnaroo, I heard that it was going to happen, but, um, I can't really put anything in stone as far as that. Uh, playing it as well. I was I was one of the attendees in 2008. Had a magnificent time. I thought the layout was wonderful. My parents actually live about 20 minutes away from there, so it's kind of a hometown Michigan show for me. Our experience as a band, um, we had flown from High Sierra Music Festival um, all night to get to Rothbury. Um, took a bus up there. We're, we're tired as hell, but uh, probably played one of our most memorable and. Um, to a ton of people, one of our better shows. So the experience of being uh, being able to play twice and kind of have a hometown, a couple of us being from Michigan and stuff, really made us uh, feel at home and, and uh, made the show that much more special. How did that Jimmy Stewart come about with Modest Yahoo? I know I have friends who went to Rothbury. Unfortunately, I couldn't go, but one of my buddies just tells me he cries every time he listens to that Modest Yahoo Jimmy Stewart you guys did at Rothbury. Oh, wow. Uh, that's very, uh, very moving. Thank him very much. It just came about of us just being friends. Uh, we toured with Modest Yahoo. He's a great guy. Um, he was there, and I think uh, somebody said, hey, you care if he comes out and sings a little? And we were like, just in the moment, let's just do it. And um, just for those listeners out there that don't know, a Jimmy Stewart for us is just an improv. Um, it means nothing more than a jazz odyssey by a spinal tap or an improvisation by um, any jazz group or anything. So we just call them Jimmy Stewart. It's our own little name. But um, that was all just uh, made up on the spot. He improved, we improved, and uh, I'm glad it was touching and moving for some people. A couple last questions before Ryan Stasek departs here on Students United Peacefully Radio here on 88.3 The Dog. You guys played so many different places uh, throughout the United States and uh, throughout Europe. Uh, you guys actually went to Australia this past year. Favorite place to play a concert and then most unique venue as well you've played at? Um, the most unique venue we ever played is when we did Fuji Rock Fest in Japan in 2006. Um, if anybody has the means and wants to experience a festival like no other, I highly, highly recommend going over and uh, just diving into the Japanese culture and enjoying music um, in Japan. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. The, the, the people are so nice and welcoming. And what they do with the festival grounds and, and the artwork and the creativity that's going on is just mind-boggling. Um, my favorite places to play, I, I have a uh, soft spot in my heart for the South. Um, can't complain about the women, the hospitality, the food, and uh, the overall atmosphere of people just ready to party. I like that. Um, also, in terms of uh, going throughout the world, Australia, you guys uh, have done shows in Europe. You're going to Jamaica, Mexico. What place in the world would you like to have Umphreys McGee play? Would you ever want to dabble in Central or South America? I've seen oh, Iron Maiden I've seen Iron Maiden documentaries and Iron Maiden is just like gods in countries like Brazil, Argentina, Chile. Will Umphreys McGee bring their improv, imp- improvisational progressive rock to the Central and South American countries? Uh, my, my answer would be indubitably. I really hope so. I, I'm sorry that when we were talking about favorite metal bands that I forgot to mention Iron Maiden. It's a big dote on my part. So I'd like to go back a little bit and say Iron Maiden for sure. Uh, we would love to get down there. We've actually looked into it. We haven't really found the festival or the ways to get down there. I know Glastonbury is another one on our list that we would love to be a part of to uh, maximize our exposure for 
for people who had never heard of us, who may never hear of us. Um, South America is definitely on top of the list. It's on my uh, hit list as, as far as travel as well. I've never been down to South America, and I've watched those documentaries with Russian Rio and Guns N' Roses down there and, and, uh, and Maiden, and the fans are extremely loyal and extremely into the music, very passionate. It's like, like looking out and watching those crowds jump up and down is like nothing other that I've ever seen. So um, nothing on the books yet, but uh, definitely pushing for it from this guy right here. Have you, uh, have you ever decided on wanting to play all 50 states in the U.S.? You guys are pretty much close to that tally. You played in Maine this past summer. Yeah. You went you went to Montana a couple of weeks ago, Missoula, Montana. Any uh, hints on possibly going to Dakotas, maybe Alaska, the islands of Hawaii? Absolutely. Those are definitely on the list, too. We've been looking at Alaska a little more than the others. Hawaii, we want to, but we haven't really been invited to uh, some of the festival circuits that are down there yet but we're pushing for it um north dakota will be hit i am positive um i'm not sure how many more we've missed we've we've got we're definitely in the 40s i know that uh final question before you uh depart and get set for uh life on the road again uh just instead of the question give us a 30 second or a minute plug on why people should see umphreys mcgee live why people should see umphreys mcgee live I think uh, if people want to get out, check out an amazing light show, meet some of the friendliest fans and people, extend their family, check out some very creative and challenging music to be played, an experience like none other that can change from night to night, but always be positive. And, uh, you know, leave, leave with word of mouth and let the family grow and expand. I like that. And one, one, one final question. I just thought of this as you were uh, giving your plug. Uh, any chances, Umphreys McGee, possibly to the Forum here in Macomb, Illinois? I know, I know you've probably never heard of the Forum, but uh, it, in terms of visualizing, if you're a good visual learner, imagine the Aragon Ballroom, just maybe a little bit compressed, but that's, but that's the Forum. Any, any uh, possibilities of Umphreys McGee making it, its way to Macomb? And the reason I ask is because I feel Macomb has the same scene as – the University of Illinois, in terms of the Canopy Club, I, we just need a, a, a kickstart, like kickstart my heart, a Motley Crue song. Any possible chances we could see an Umphreys McGee sighting in Macomb, Illinois? I think possibilities are limitless with Umphreys McGee. So maybe after I get off this interview, I'll call my manager up and do a little plug. Let's just hope that room sounds better than the Aragon. It, so it sounds a lot better. <laughs> it's like an old movie theater, too. I know you guys have played at venues like that, like the Vic Theater in Chicago was an old movie theater, so uh, it's, it's yeah. a pretty cool place. Oh, well, then I will uh, put it on the radar for the uh, man in charge. All right, uh, that's Ryan Stasek. Ryan, th oh, one last thing. Election Day is coming up. I forgot to mention this. How important is it for you uh, to vote, and how important is it for other people uh, to uh, express themselves by voting? Well, I think I'm going to use an analogy here about touring on the road. I think uh, voting just once every four years is kind of like changing your socks once a week on tour so uh it's pretty important and everybody that has that opportunity and that freedom should take advantage of it ryan stasek bassist of umphreys mcgee thank you so much for being on students united peacefully radio if you want to see umphreys mcgee live i highly suggest you do so two night run starting tonight at the canopy club in urbana illinois halloween if you want to see a unique concert go to the pageant theater october 30th and 31st the third annual halloween mashup they're coming back to chicago to the riviera theater for new year's eve three night run kicking off on december 29th to december 31st ryan thank you so much for being on sub radio today thank you for having me it was a pleasure